everybody. Today, Chris and I are gonna sit down and do a Q&A, but I have a few th <laughs> I won't do it again. You're horrible. I won't do it again. I don't know. I don't know about that. Stop! Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> okay, I really won't. I'm serious. I'm, Let I me do this too. intro. Hello everybody. Uh, today Chris and I are going to sit down and do a Q&A. We've been talking about doing this for a very long time and here we are. But I have a few things that I want to share before we start the Q&A. And this is one of them. So we have officially started water glassing eggs. I did not film this for a YouTube video. I will be sharing it on some other platforms. Um, but they look really cool and it was a really fun and easy process. And then right now during the Q&A, we're gonna be cutting up apples because we are doing an apple pie filling and we're gonna can that for obviously the winter. So that's what we'll be working on while we answer your questions. Okie dokie. So we're taking these questions from Instagram. Also, let's just pause to see how cool this little contraption is. Is it in frame? <laughs> it's barely in frame, but yeah. Nice. It's so cool. And we're keeping the extras for apple cider vinegar. So this little thing, I had it um, when I was growing up as a little girl and thought it was like the coolest thing ever. So we got one for cutting up these apples and it's still the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it cuts the apples into this cool spiral and cores them and skins them or peels them. Look at that. Okay. Easy peasy. On to the questions. I think that we should start with the, the, the most commonly asked question. How did we meet? What's our story? What's your version of it, babe? <laughs> well, how detailed do we want to get? It's up to you. Okay, here's my version. I'm gonna... <laughs> we were both a part of this show called Gutted. And if you're newer around here, Gutted is a, it's a five day building competition where you have a van, a school bus, and an RV. And in five days, each team needs to build out the van, RV, or school bus. And I didn't know that he existed before Gutted. I met him at Gutted. But we didn't really ever like talk or meet. Um, but I thought he was cute. So the part that she's- Stop. <laughs> the part that she's leaving out is apparently at gutted she, she was calling me wolfman okay <laughs> <laughs> i was absolutely not calling him anything <laughs> like that but it was a joke amongst a few people of my team that i had mentioned in passing while we were building like <laughs> like chris is pretty cute on the schoolie team and then they thought that it was the greatest thing ever and started giving him a code name. And now he just uses it and abuses it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was cool. Yeah, okay, anyway, moving on. So, <laughs> I had mentioned to somebody that work, worked for him at the time. She was a good friend of mine, her name's Kat. She's gonna love that I'm telling this story actually. And I had mentioned to Kat because we had travel plans and um, we were gonna meet up and go to the Pacific Northwest together, but she had to pick up a bus from Chris. And as we were talking about our travel plans, she mentioned she was heading to the shop, needed to get a, a bus from him and um, that she was gonna jump on a podcast with Chris. And I very sarcastically, I wasn't looking for anything serious, wasn't gonna like, whatever. Very sarcastically texted her and said, hey, let him know that if he needs a wife, I've got one for him. And it turns out that that's exactly what she said. <laughs> so, um, 
I remember getting that call from her. I could not believe that she said anything, but she also mentioned that she, because she knew Chris and she knew me, and she thought that it would be awesome if we got together, just hung out. Like, she's like, if anything, you guys are gonna be really good friends because you're so similar. So, the next day I woke up to a little message from old Christopher over here, and then, the rest is history, kind of. We spent a few months just talking, because I was all over the place. I was traveling, going to Iceland, Pacific Northwest, all the way down to Utah. And um, yeah, so we didn't actually physically meet up until end of December. What do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so my version is exactly the same. So at Gutted, um, Schoolie Team, their, their team won, by the way, but Schoolie Team, we did a roof raise and built the bus, so we were basically just focused on the rig the entire time. And I am not that, well, I mean, I guess there was really no cues. Like, I honestly just didn't even think anything was even possible. I was just in my own little world, right? And then when Kat said that, I was like, what, like, what are you even talking about? She's like, well, she didn't like talk to you or whatever. I was like, yeah, she stopped by the bus a couple times. Once. I sat by the bus to say good job. Well, you, you were there the first day. Like, oh, so yeah. So I, I yeah. was out talking to people because um, one of my videographers for Tiny Home Tours, Brad, was there at the event. So I was walking around meeting people in their rigs and, you know, kind of scoping that out. And then I came back to my rig and there's a bunch of people in my rig. And that's when I first met you because Sage, um, Kat's boyfriend, is my head editor. Uh, so I knew... So you filmed with Sage on the channel. So she was on Tiny Home Tours before I even met her. Um, and met you there, talked a little bit there, and then at the end, um, we were packing up, getting ready to go, and she stopped by the bus and said, nice to meet you and all that, and like didn't pick up on anything at all, but I don't think there was necessarily anything to pick up on. So when Kat was there, she's she was like, yeah, remember Linnea at Gutted? I was like, <laughs> uh what team was she on <laughs> and i was like oh yeah linnea from the van team and then just started chatting from there so that's that's the story and that's why um that's why my nickname for linnea oh, okay. is wolfman okay <laughs> i feel like we both knew pretty quick that I don't know, we just got along really well. Our, our lives merged pretty seamlessly. Yeah, and I think a lot of our goals and the way that we do things were very similar. Like I've never been with a woman like Glenea that's so self-motivated and driven. And that is yeah. very, I tell you that all the time. I know. That's, that's very appealing to me because, you know, when I was talking to her is I never wanted to be in a relationship where you know, I'm 90% of the decision making or, you know, control of their relationship. I always wanted things to be 50 50 in a partnership. And with Linnea, I definitely get that. <laughs> Very, what's, what, what's the word? Very sure of what she wants and how she wants to do it. And I appreciate that. Sometimes he calls that stubbornness. You call me stubborn. I call you hard-headed. <laughs> well, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're also both very stubborn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's good for now. Yeah? Do you want to yeah. add anything else? Um, just that it's crazy how it all came together. It is crazy, yeah. if I wasn't an investor in a shop building buses for people on the team, Kat would not have been there. Just... Sage coming onto the team because he knew Brian, my head videographer. Ooh, like, it's just crazy how it all came together. It's really, it's really strange. Nerdmatic. Why not sell the van and move into the bus? Save on gas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to answer this one? Yeah, this is you, babe. Okay. I'm going to start with saying that I truly think the bus is an amazing <laughs> rig. I do. I really do. I think that it's very, like, Chris 
and he's worked so hard on creating like just the, the physical part of his bus as well as everything leading up like the years leading up to having a rig like that like I understand what it's like to have your perfect home and his friends helped him there's just a lot that goes into that bus with that being said I have never been so sure of how much I love my home as of right like right now I really like how small my rig is I really like that it can get me anywhere there are a lot of things that like it's just a lot more simple um, I don't have to worry about certain oh gosh I'm talking too much oh no you're good I don't have to worry about certain things breaking um, certain systems being wrong because I simply just don't have many of them I, I really like living this simple um, so I don't know that I could ever really get bigger and and like live that way but of course we never know what's gonna happen in the future and like you know talking like family and stuff who who knows but right now and for the foreseeable future I just love my home so much I'm also very emotionally connected to my home so many things have happened in this van this van has changed my life I have transformed as a person throughout the build and throughout the travels and it really feels like it's like my best friend as silly as that sounds and I think that Chris is like at this point definitely knows that and something that I love a lot about our time together is that he doesn't push me into his his bus at all I love hanging out in his bus somebody else had asked about like where we sleep and stuff like we sleep in his in his bus often um we cook in his bus like i love using the space i love sharing that space i love it when he comes in here and shares this space and i was going somewhere with that i don't remember what did i what did i what was i starting to say with well ba basically i mean it should be known that oh no what i was gonna say is that i what i love <laughs> what i'm gonna say <laughs> Um, it's a little scary. Yeah, I don't know. You better watch out. Um, I love that he doesn't like push me into living differently. And like, there will be n a few nights in a row where I'm like, no, let's like, I want to sleep in the van. He's like, yeah, cool. Even though we're sleeping in a full size bed with two humans and a very large dog because Akila <laughs> is always with us and tries to take up as much of the bed as she can. And even though that that's like scrunched and uncomfortable, he just fully supports like me wanting to still live in my van. And I love that well, what, so much. <laughs> what, what I was going to say is um, I, I don't see it as a, uh, a negative of her having the rig or I've never wanted both of us to live in the bus, mainly because I think the system that we have and how it works works awesome with me having my bus in her space in this upcoming winter like we're gonna have designated hours where she's out here working in her van and I'll be working in my bus and if you use that as a baseline I feel like that's how we live our life like whenever you need to get work done or whatever you have your space where you can come get your work done hang out and chill same with the bus I think it works really well with our dynamic I think it's a positive more so than a negative and you know like she's saying all the systems like when my bus broke down a lot when we you know first started dating all of a sudden my bus got a bunch of issues and it was really nice to just leave the bus at the repair shop have them get all the parts get it done because i had a major repair uh in wyoming this summer and we just drove the van what was it four or five hours north to a national park and we just bounced around in the van it was awesome and when her van uh the transmission went out we had the bus and we had the tow car so i think with the three vehicles that we have together on the road i think the dynamic works really well and i don't foresee a future to where you don't have your own rig whether it be this or whatever rig you have yeah. i don't foresee you not having your own vehicle that you're able to go off and do your thing because backcountry stuff obviously i can't get my bus in certain spots that this van can and you know, we, we talked about it a lot. Like I'm definitely not opposed to dropping my bus off at an RV park where I know it's safe, have my security cameras on. And we just take this this guy up to the back country and do whatever we need to do. Like 
I, I think it's a positive mm -hmm. for, for sure. I agree. I think that's also another big reason why, um, like this kind of goes away from the relationship aspect of it, but as far as like nomadic living, when I hear somebody telling somebody else, oh, you definitely get this rig, like definitely go buy a short bus or definitely go get a four by four van. It really bothers me because people live drastically different on the road. My passions are very different from the next you know, nomadic person on the road. And that's why this is perfect for me. It, it doesn't mean that everybody's gonna be happy in a rig like this, or like with Chris's bus, not everybody's gonna be happy in a rig like that. And so I'm like, man, go and like see how people are living. Find somebody that lives similar to you. Like find somebody with a lifestyle that you would really want to like live or resonate with. And then that'll give you a better idea of what kind of rig is good for you. Yeah, and that's why, I mean, honestly, it's plugging my own stuff here. It's not meaning to be, but it, I think that's why Tiny Home Tours does so well because people that are interested, like there is no one size fits all. I've lived in two camper vans uh class a rv and now the school bus been on the road um you know at, at first i didn't have any mobile income so i would travel in my van for six months work six months and just do that rotation but if you include that time and my full time on the road i've been on the road for 12 years and it's been an iteration depending on where i was in life to what rig i wanted like when i first started the goal was just to get on the road and have a place to sleep and have a place to store my canned food. Like that was literally my priority when I first got on the road. Where now that I have discovered and experienced public land and bureau land management and the whole deal, being off the grid, self-sustained with a little tow car to bounce around is like ideal for me and it's changed over time. So yeah, there's no one perfect rig for anybody. You definitely gotta check it out, see what other people are doing and why they like it and why they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it your turn? My turn. Uh, your turn. Um, we can talk about the dogs a little. How does that sound? Let's do it. All right. So, live, love. No, Livy Love asks, does Aquila like having Kobuk around? How do you manage two dogs on the road? Um, Aquila absolutely adores Kobuk. It didn't start that way. Mm -mm. They got into a little fight one time in the car which i still blame us for or me for um and kobuk has a little little nick on his nose still from that time i think it's still there oh it's there <laughs> we remember akila forever um so it started you know they were very much figuring each other out and now though akila loves kobuk she takes some time to get to know humans and dogs and it takes her time to share her space but man once they kind of flipped a switch and became best buds um a few things happened they started playing like best buds like at first both of them were a little unsure about each other and now they wrestle hard like every day and akila will share the bed with him easy she lets kobuk be in her kennel and yeah it's 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 great it's amazing i love that she has a friend all the time and that kobuk loves the van that's super fun kobuk likes to like when we're traveling kobuk will travel in the van um and that seems to be really good for him very good for him he gets a little anxious in the bus, I think just because it's probably just so loud and big. You can probably speak on that more. Well, what happened is actually gutted. So on the way home from gutted, uh, Wes, my business partner at the shop in Kansas, wanted to take a back road home. And then it took us through backcountry roads, very narrow, and it was uh, very windy. And since that time, like when I say windy, like I almost went off into a ditch multiple times and I was like 10 and two but the bus is so big and tall that the wind was like pulling me off the road, like almost pulling me into a ditch. And since that time, Kobuk's been very, very nervous in the bus where it's probably the wind and the noise, he just gets stressed, um, where he basically just travels full time in the, uh, in the van now, where I'll just get in the bus, get the tow car ready, and then Kobuk hops in here. And at first he was pretty nervous in here, where now you say pretty much he sleeps now. 
Um, I think it helps that Aquila just sleeps and she doesn't really like entertain his nerves at all. You know, cause dogs can often just feed off of each other, both positively and negatively. And she just like knocks out when we drive. And I think that that's really like helped him where he's like, oh, Aquila's not even freaking out about this. <laughs> And so now he'll just go in the kennel and curl up and go to sleep. Yeah, and I'm sure he probably picks up a little bit on my nervousness driving the bus. And, you know, I'm very comfortable driving the bus. I'm not not too worried about it. But there's a couple things with the bus. One, it's just massive. Um, and it's more of being a, often, or a defensive driver because people will swerve in front of me, put on their brakes, and I just have to look so far ahead of me. I'm always constantly, like, I'm heightened driving the, the bus so he might be picking up a little bit on uh on my anxiousness and probably a little yeah, bit maybe. and uh, also with the bus being that it's not you know like a 2018 monaco monarch and the insurance knows exactly how much that rv is worth and how much they're going to pay out if something happens to my bus it's going to be i'm there's no way i'm getting all my money back it's basically two and a half years of my life of working non-stop to get it to where it is. So that's another reason why I'm a little heightened when I'm driving. I'm just so careful with it. Uh, so he probably picks up on that where you're just cruising at 80 miles per hour and I'm like... Yeah. But yeah, I remember the very first time. So they didn't get along that much at first after the little tussle. So <laughs> Kobuk was good before that. He was just a little wary, but he was just like playing with her normal and everything. After that, he hated her. He didn't want to be around her. He didn't want to like play with her. She'd try and play with him and he'd just tuck his head away and start growling at her, like get away from me. And I remember we were in Arizona at that spot near Lake Pleasant. And for the first time, Kobuk started playing with her a little bit. And remember, I remember we were walking back to the bus. I remember the exact time. And since then, it was slowly building, building where now they're you know, best friends like Kobuk was inside because he was a bad boy and ate some steaks I just cooked. <laughs> and um, Aquila was uh, looking around for him, looking him in the back, looking for him in the back of the car, running around trying to find him. Like they're they're definitely best buds now. Yeah, they love each other. It's it's awesome. I don't think we'd be together if they didn't like each other. <laughs> Honestly, that's like a big deal, you know. You that's true. You can't be with somebody if their dog doesn't like your dog. That's true. They figured each other out. <laughs> Just like we did, huh, babe? Yep. I got a couple scars from her, too. <laughs> what? No, he doesn't. <laughs> the road to van life. Would you still go on trips by yourself if Chris was busy and you wanted to go somewhere? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. I just went to Detroit. That was more for business, though. But yeah, I think that's one thing that's really cool about this specific system and relationship is I feel like we are so, how do I say this? Both of us were very independent and sure of ourselves and um, confident in travel and what we wanted in life before coming together that two people coming together with those characteristics and attributes it just makes for what I feel is like a very secure and mature partnership and Chris even says all the time like yeah if you and Aquila want to go do whatever like go do whatever or if I want to go fly overseas that he'll watch Aquila and and like doing those things solo or with other people is totally part of the deal like I just spent um, two weeks in the backcountry with my friend Dan and I would say that there are, is a very low percentage of partners or significant others that would be comfortable or like quote-unquote allow their partner <laughs> to be in the backcountry with another man for two weeks and and he was watching Aquila while while that you know while we were back there so yeah, that's like not an issue at all with us as long as communication is really solid and and we, we're really open about that kind of stuff. Like how we feel about certain situations or travels and yeah. Do you have anything to add? 
I think it's just uh, we both appreciate travel and understand how important it is for the other person. So I think one of our strengths is also uh, having empathy for the other person's situation and not not letting it affect the relationship or doing the best you can to not let it affect the relationship. Um, what do you mean? Like, you want to go on a hunting trip. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll use that as an example. Like, of course, like you said, not many people, but I think a lot of people in relationships only see how, like, oh, you're not doing that. They're, they're only thinking about themselves, right? Where I think both of us are able to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and be like, no, it's it's not that big of a deal. Like, and also being in a relationship, having trust and understanding that that's what they want to do. And you have to allow that. You can't keep people in a cage or a box. Yeah. They got to be able to do what they want, when they want, and just have that inherent trust in them. So I think we both understand that. Like, so after off grid, I have a group of guy friends and we're going to Dublin and Ireland essentially immediately after like I'm gonna have some culture shock but it's like <laughs> a a yearly trip that I do with my guy friends and we're doing that immediately after um, being off grid like once once our time's up if if we make it knock on wood we will but um, yeah and it wasn't an issue it's just like yeah have have fun enjoy your time and she might be doing the same thing and I'll be watching Aquila and when I head over to Dublin and Ireland or Dublin and Barcelona uh, She'll be watching Koba. So I think we're both on the same page with that. Yeah. I can imagine that, I mean, I can imagine that maybe some people watching this might think that it's a little odd. Or maybe not odd, but like, oh man, I couldn't do that. Or like, that. I, I mean, I know many, many people and we have a lot of friends or people that we know of that would be way less cool with their significant other doing things without them or traveling without them or being with other people for long periods of time without them but there's actually like an idea or a quote or something that i often think about and it's it has more to do with like trusting in yourself i guess like i tr i trust chris and i want him to experience everything that he can and it's almost impossible not to feel um, any worry or anxiety, especially because of like, I have things from my past that come up, you know, and, and that kind of bleed into this relationship. But one of the things that I talk about to myself is like, yes, I trust him, but moreover, I trust myself to deal with whatever happens. Like I know I have full trust in myself that whatever happens, good, bad, ugly, like I know that I can handle it and that I can make the decisions that I need in that moment. So that's yeah, how I, I think about it too, you know? Yeah. And I think the uh, part about people from the outside, cause I, I have the, it's not the same mental talk, but it's the same thing. It's like, you know, I, I'm more of trust somebody a hundred percent until I don't I don't, I don't work that way. <laughs> so we we're on different parallels there, but that's my self talk. It's like, yeah, like there's no reason not to trust somebody or, you know, worry about anything if there's no, no proven history of that, you know? So it's a little bit, it, it is odd. Cause I remember when you were up hunting, one of my favorite hobbies is garage selling. I love going around finding video game stuff and Pokemon cards and all sorts of random stuff and one of the ladies that I was talking to I was like yeah my my girlfriend's up hunting right now and she's like oh cool she's up there by herself I was like no she's with her, her friend named Dan and she's kind of looked at me like that's kind of weird <laughs> and I was like oh yeah like it's, it's just like it's not even part of my uh, part of my mindset and it's it's just that default that's served me well so far so. cool Good? Good. Good question. What is Chris's most prized Pokemon in Pokemon Go? Mm. So actually, since this is going on YouTube, a lot of you guys don't know this. I don't think I've ever talked about this on YouTube. 
but Chris really likes Pokemon. Actually, he's wearing a Pokemon hat right now. <laughs> Got it at a thrift store for five bucks. Yeah, um, a good, <laughs> I like it. A good chunk of our time, not a good chunk, some of our time is spent in the bus opening Pokemon cards and stashing them away in a whole bunch of binders. And he likes Pokemon Go as well. So my, my absolute favorite thing is going to garage sales and somebody having an old collection and then I buy it and then we go through it and look up the values. I absolutely love that. I never sold a Pokemon card, but my favorite Pokemon in Pokemon Go. You better be careful with this one. <laughs> so I guess by default, I got to say the Linnea Pokemon. So a little, little bit of backstory. We're going to lose people on this, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, so one of my favorite Pokemons is Eevee and Eevee evolves into different Pokemon which are very popular ones. And basically in Pokemon Go, you can write a name as like a cheat code and it will make a particular EV evolution. And one of them's a Leafeon. And when we're opening Pokemon cards, Leafeon's one of her favorite Pokemon. And if you make an, if you change the name from Eevee to Linnea, it actually becomes a Leafeon. So, and it's actually a strong fighter. I fight with it all the time in the, <laughs> in the, uh, player versus player league so yep that's my favorite what were you gonna say before i i don't know it's it's i have i have that? so many fun ones i would say in pokemon go the stunk fish because it's an awesome fighter and nobody uses it and i beat people with it all the time and yeah that's, that's probably my favorite in pokemon go a stunk fish with uh discharge and <laughs> what and uh yeah, it's like an electric Pokemon, but it has a mud bomb that messes people up and they're not expecting it. So that's my favorite in Pokemon Go. My, my favorite fighter. L Linnea is my favorite Pokemon in general. In that's Pokemon good, Go. that's good, yeah. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. There you have it, folks. All right, it's your <laughs> turn. So this person, this is a girl in two van dogs. And her question is, <laughs> The dirty pot stories have me wondering who is better at doing dishes. Because sometimes I talk about my dirty dishes. Oh, yeah. Her so sink's full right now. So here's my answer to this. <laughs> Chris is much better at doing dishes. Um, I hate doing dishes. That is the sole reason why I didn't install a bigger sink when all of you thought I was going to install a bigger sink because my tiny sink is liter I literally just use it to store dirty dishes and I figured if I put a bigger sink in there I would just be able to store more dirty dishes so um yeah but the way the reason I wanted to talk about that was not to throw myself under the bus but it was because lately so as you guys know I really love to cook like I love cooking I've always cooked in the van and now that I have Chris like I just cook extra of whatever we want obviously for both of us but I will get questions or kind of, I mean, kind of rude statements actually when I do cook a lot for Chris and people are like, well, what is he doing for you? Like, when is he going to cook you dinner? And every time I, I chuckle because I think 99% of the time after I cook, Chris cleans up and that I am like so grateful for because I feel really appreciated then when I cook and then I don't have to do the shit I don't want to do and it's just a really great system so yeah that's what I have to say about that so I actually enjoy doing dishes because I'll put on a podcast or a YouTube video I love listening to podcasts and audiobooks and um, since I was a little kid like even in, a, in, a, in elementary school I've had to doodle to actually pay attention to actually retain more of what I'm doing like I don't know why that is so I enjoy it because I learn more because I'm actually able to get that physical side of it out um, and yeah like Linnea enjoys cooking more than I do where my meals are very simple like I'll do steak and then if I'm getting fancy I'll add sauteed mushrooms like that will literally be my meal like I am very simple um, when it comes to cooking stuff so being that she likes to cook and she makes amazing meals, like obviously I'll clean up after. And I, I, it'd be interesting to ask those people, 
if if the dynamic would be the same if I cooked and then you cleaned if they'd even ask. Yeah, I know. They, they probably wouldn't. Which is interesting. But, you know, on, on the flip side of that, you know, a lot of times when we eat good meals, like we'll go out to eat and I ref not I won't say I refuse to let her pay, but a lot of times I'll be sneaky and pay because that's like me so giving nice. back to her cooking. Like that's that's I feel like it's a dynamic that we had without even saying it. The cooking cleaning thing? Well the cooking cleaning, but also like when we go out to eat, that's I typically stubborn. <laughs> well, that's because you're stubborn. Well it's it's also because you cook a lot. Yeah, but sometimes I want to pay for you, babe. And you know that. Yeah. I don't know. I just like... <laughs> You're losing all the apple. I know. Um, I mean, but even with my friends, like, even guys at the shop or friends, like when we did the bachelor parties or whatever that I went on, because all my friends are getting married right now and having their bachelor parties, um, I would always pay for the meals. Like, I just like going out and treating people. So I think that's, I mean, I never thought about it like that, but that is kind of our dynamic. You'll cook and I'll clean, and then when we go out, I typically get it. Even when you try and be sneaky and give them the card, I already gave them the card. <laughs> Sometimes I get it in there, though. Sometimes. No, it is interesting. I think if, it, if, the, uh, if the genders were reversed, nobody would have a problem. I know. Peaks and poetry. How do you plan on spending your free time in the Northwoods? Ooh, what a great question. You go first. Okay, so. I haven't really thought about this too much because <laughs> I'm just excited to get there. So I say this a lot on my social and Lene hears me say this to people all the time, but it is like a good, just a general statement that will give you an idea of where my head's at with all this. So when I was seven, very young, I told my grandmother I was going to live out in the woods with my dog and not pay rent or utilities. So this type of lifestyle, this type of thing is something that's been in inherently in me for a very long time. Like when I, I graduated college in 2010 and the first thing I did with my graduation money, I sold my Mustang that I had supercharged that I built up, built the engine, the whole thing. Sold all that, paid off all my debt, bought a very cheap van off eBay that had 18, 180,000 miles on it and just hit the road with my dog because it was the only way I was able to bounce around, have a safe place to sleep and store my food. So this type of travel and just having my stuff and my gear with me and seeing how long I can make it last has been something that's been very intriguing to me and something that I've wanted to do since I was a little kid. So, just being out there, I really haven't thought about the free time because I'm trying not to plan it too much because I just want to experience it. And like, I'm back and forth on getting a, a Nintendo DS. Like if I just want to veg out and not do too much, I'll have that option, but I also want to enjoy it out there. So, I mean, as far as my free time, I've thought about getting a little game system just to chill, but I haven't even made my mind up with that. So I just want to film, I want to experience it, I want to see what it's like going through all this food, um, thinking of different ways to cook the food, shooting the bow, hanging out with the dogs, gathering water, building out there, you know, whether we build tables, whether we're still trying to figure out if we're going to build an outside shelter outside the bus. Like, I'm just excited to get there and experience it, and I'm not really making too many plans other than food prep. So I'm just excited to get out there more than anything else. Does that make sense? Yeah, it did. Like you're just gonna go with the flow. Yes. Long story short, I'm gonna go with the flow. <laughs> Whoa. Is that a suction cup? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's getting a little wet, so it's I did not, do you wanna get that paper towel? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. They thought of everything. Um, I am most excited about practicing like some primitive skills. So I'd like to do, oh, did the core not come out? No. So there are a few little challenges that I want to do while I'm up there. I'm planning on doing 
building a debris hut. Basically, like, right when I get up there. Ideally, we'll get up there before snow. Um, but I'd like to do a debris hut, which is basically um, a very simple, low to the ground, um, like, A-frame that has a ton of insulation on it. Basically, just leaves. Tons of leaves on it. And so I want to start the season by building that debris hut and sleeping in it and making that kind of a video. Um, you know, I've made debris huts before. I've actually never slept in them with just a very simple, simple gear. And then what I'd love to do is find time then like midwinter, like end of January into February, like really cold, go back to that debris hut midwinter and sleep in it again and see what it's like to actually like feel the type of insulation that I can that I can like gather and experience with the hut and kind of have just like a little bushcraft time with that. Um, I'm really looking forward to learning how to hunt whitetails. So I've been looking at tree saddles and I'm going to replace my pack for an all around backpacking and hunting pack because I don't have much space for a bunch of different gear. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we live on the, or we live, we're going to be living on the edge of public land. So that will be really fun to explore. And also this is something that a while ago, Chris and I talked about, but I would like to spend some time doing some more creative and artistic things because when I was younger, I did a lot of art. Um, and I just don't do art anymore. You know, I'll, I'll do like little wood burnings here and there, but I haven't really done art. So I would like to do maybe some more wood burnings and also get back into wrapped wooden rings. I won't be selling them. <laughs> but Chris was interested in those when I had mentioned that I used to do that. So we're gonna bring up all the stuff that I have and we're going to spend some time making some really beautiful wooden rings. It can be inlaid with, you know, different stones and gems, and that's a really fun process. And I've also made some wedding bands out of antler. So if I were to get a buck, I would love to turn that into some really beautiful jewelry, along with like same same kind of thing. I could go on and on about everything I want to do, to be honest. But um, you know, if we are successful with you know, taking a, an animal with taking a, um, a deer. I would love to try our best to use every part of that animal as best as I know at this point. So that would mean like brain tanning the hide. It would also mean ideally making soap out of the tallow, rendering down the fat in that way. Um, you know, antlers for jewelry or maybe my brother does flint napping so I could, you know, make a part of that antler and give it give it to him for his flint napping um yeah i think that sounds so cool i'm that's mostly what i'm excited about i'll stop blabbering but it, like getting into the more primitive skill type stuff that is kind of hard to dedicate time to when you're on the road because you're you're rarely like in one place for long enough to be able to explore that kind of stuff especially when your rigs keep continuously breaking down yeah. and you have weddings and yeah. flights you need to catch like yeah it's been this, a wild th this summer has been crazy and there's been multiple times to where uh, like how busy we are and things coming up like next week we got to drive down to florida for a wedding and it's like okay so this is the last one you know just because we've been bouncing around for weddings and bachelor parties and bachelorette parties and all that um so i'm excited to not necessarily have any set thing i, I guess i should have prefaced that original statement like i want to go with the flow and check it out but i'm excited to be in a space to where there's no outside distractions and nowhere where i need to be just absolutely exist concentrate on the business concentrate on new projects that we're working on there hang out with linnea do things together crafts building like just be present out there and experience it i think is the better way of putting it rather than going with the flow and that's, that's why I haven't really thought about it because I'm just looking forward to that particular time to do that. That makes sense, Ben. Okay, favorite thing about each other. <laughs> I'm gonna go first because I know mine. 
Okay, I have two. Can I do two? Make our own rules, baby. All right. So my favorite thing about Chris, I so I have a lot. I'm just gonna choose the ones that are on my mind and have been on my mind lately. Oh wow, this one's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um. So the first one that I that I want to start with is how he treats the people in his life, not just me, but his family, the people that work for him, his friends. Every single time that I see him interacting with somebody, it's kind and positive and confident. And I feel like that says a lot about somebody when they treat the people around them really, really well and want nothing in return for it. I love that about you. Thanks, babe. You're welcome. It's very Wait, nice. second one um, is that he truly 100% lets me be exactly who I am. I have never felt that he has wanted me to be more girly, or I've never felt that he's wanted me to be um, less sassy. Well, maybe sometimes less sassy. Or like... I wouldn't say that. I'd say I just... Uh, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, you're being this sassy? All right. <laughs> but I've also not like... I love what I do in the capacity that I do it, meaning on social media and the way that I'm on social media. Um, and I, he's never, he's never, he'll make suggestions of course, because we're both very like business minded people, but he, he's not trying to ever make me into somebody that I'm not. And I just love that so much because I get to feel, I get to feel like myself and I get to be completely myself in this dynamic and it's wonderful absolutely wonderful I think the only thing I've ever harped on was you starting a newsletter yeah that's true <laughs> he really wants me to start a newsletter and I just can't I just sounds horrible it's with YouTube and Instagram and Facebook they can just cut you off then then you're gone but that's neither here nor there and then me I just say no <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sounds good. And I'm the kind of person, though, and he's learning this. Oh, I've the, learned it. The more <laughs> I've definitely learned it. <laughs> the more you tell me to do something, the more I'm gonna dig my heels in. Last night we were hanging out on the couch, and I was like, I was getting tired. I was like, uh, you should go shower, and then we can go to bed. And she looked at me like I told her that <laughs> her nose was fat. <laughs> Like, it was like the worst thing I could have said at that time. Just like, I'm sorry, if you feel like it. <laughs> it's just like the tone, like, you know? You know what I mean? It's the tone, it's like, I just hate it. I hate being, did you just pinch yourself? Just cut myself. You did? Yeah. Oh shit, babe. Oh my God, how? This guy right here. Oh boy. I don't think it's gonna bleed. It's kinda deep. It is. I'll survive. Is it stinging with the apple juice? Nope. Do you have uh, band-aids? No. Oh, my turn. Got a little napkin here because I am a silly boy and cut myself. Cut myself. What would that be for? Oh that's what cuts it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So what was the question? Like my like what I love most. About each other. Favorite my favorite thing about Linnea, I've told you this before, and it still holds true, is it seems as though from from my experience, like with past relationships, I've never felt the need to grow as a person. And I'd say with Linnea, <laughs> I would say that I hold her to such a high standard and she com continuously upholds that high standard. I feel like I am working to get to that standard. And I think my favorite thing about you is you give me the desire and need to better myself. Aww, that's really sweet. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I tell you that. Yeah. 
We do talk about that. Let's see if I pass out from this cup. You don't get woozy at that. Mm. Are you serious? I'm getting like woozy at scared of cutting my hand again. Like I'm, I'm seeing it in my head that it like goes down to the bone. You know what I mean? Like I'm psyching myself out. Because that probably did go to the bone. No, it did not. Babe, it's deep. Let me see. I don't want to. There's no way. See? Babe, that didn't go to the bone. Feels like it. <laughs> I hate, I hate that stuff. <laughs> Ava K-U-K-L-I-S I don't know how to say that I'm, I apologize It's early But do you plan for retirement Since social media doesn't provide a pension <laughs> I've never I never answer these types of questions I get asked about retirement I get asked about 401k I get asked about all sorts of shit Now's the time baby the reason that I don't answer these questions is because I know how much hate I'm going to get from older traditional folk on here. Okay, I'm going to be honest, I do not prepare for retirement in maybe the way that you guys expect me to or want me to. So... That's my answer. <laughs> I do have a 401k, but I do not put money in it anymore. I do invest some things. I have a, um, what is that called? A Roth IRA that I put a good chunk of money in every single month. Um, so that feels good to have a Roth. That That's kind of like what I'm doing as my retirement. I also, in a way, am hoping I mean, I can't say this for sure, but as long as social media exists and is allowed, and as long as people are viewing long form content, my channel can be considered as like a source of evergreen content, which, which means that, you know, 10 years from now, if people are viewing my van build series that will continue to make me money. Um, so that's a little piece of it, but I think the idea of retirement is a little silly to me. It always has felt silly to me. I, and I'm not saying that I don't think people should retire. That's not what I'm saying. I think for me, when I think of retirement, it, it is work, 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 work until you are of a certain age and then you can stop working and then live off of you know money that you're you're getting from retirement and that's your time to explore travel see the world but i have an issue with that because you know my dad died at 66 and retired a few years prior and my dad luckily did a lot of things in his life and got some really beautiful years of travel in but i i just refuse to to be in a position where I have to live for retirement, even if that means that I, I'm living off of very little money or living very simply, that is worth, it's worth not having, um, it's worth having the time now to travel and experience things because I don't know when this life is going to end for me. That's kind of my answer, I guess. And I know that it's non-traditional. I know that, you know, it could, mean trouble in the future and I think that I'm also pretty sure in myself having the skills and the and the work ethic to make money when I need to and I'm not above any any job per se so you know if shit hits the fan I'll I'll, I'll make money doing something else that's my answer what do you think about that I agree so there's a book called the four-hour work week Linnea hears me talk about this all the time as well all the time but in the book, uh, Tim Ferriss talks about the deferred life plan, and that is exactly what Linnea was talking about. And if you actually go into the numbers, if you go into the stats, and when I'm saying numbers, like how much your money's gonna be worth now versus when you retire, um, how many people that save, 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 something happens and they lose it all and they're still not, they still don't have that much money once, once they retire, like 2008, for example. 
um, deferred life plan says that you spend, you know, 90% of your life to have 10% of your life where you're not as physically capable as you are. And I definitely have empathy for people that view it that way because that was the world at that particular time to where it's honestly nothing but dumb luck. And I tell people how lucky and how blessed I feel to be born at the right time on the right piece of dirt to be able to do yeah. what I do and make money online. And I'm the same same thought process as Linnea. Like, if shit hits the fan, lose everything, not able to do anything, hopefully I'd still have my bus and the skills that I learned throughout this business building process, working with people, building teams, like, it's well worth the risk for me because I absolutely enjoy and love what I do. And I, I just feel like even if it shit hits the fan and tomorrow everything's gone, I have to go work at some, some menial job making minimum wage. Just the last 12 years of doing this particular lifestyle have been worth it. Like that is a penance that I'm willing to pay. But right now, you know, it's like for me and I don't know exactly how much for Linnea, but with how well things are going right now, I don't foresee it drastically changing. I, I see it getting better, especially with the different stuff we're doing with tiny home tours and the different possibilities we have. So I don't care if there's not a pension. I'd rather put it out there and live every day to my satisfaction, like enjoying it, than try and build for a future that might not be there. Where present day is absolutely here. The past is gone. The future is not guaranteed. All I have is this day right now and living the way that I am right now, I'm living each day the best that I can and not having a pension is well worth the risk. And if things continue going the way they are, I'm not gonna have to worry about a pension, but I, I'm not banking on that. I know it's a possibility it could be gone tomorrow, but it's worth it. It's worth the risk. It's absolutely worth the risk. Yeah. I mean, everything is a risk when you think about it. Like any way of life, any idea of money, like it's all a risk. We've seen it and heard it through history. It can be gone in an instant or it can, you know, we just never really know. I don't know. I refuse to do the deferred life plan. Yeah. Absolutely refuse to do that. No way. All right, this will be our last question. There's a few, um, there's like a really good handful about the off-grid winter stuff. So I'm just gonna lump some of them together so that we can, we can finish off with clarifying a few off-grid things. So here are my thoughts. So this person asked about holidays. So are we gonna spend them with family or stay on grid? So let's talk about holidays which I think then we can also get into like emergency situations and kind of our intention of like our, our kind of our rules of being on the land and like not leaving. Yeah. And then also somebody had asked about the dogs and off grid. So how are we going to keep them safe, fed and warm during the off grid thing? So we'll start with talking about once Kristoff's making all this Sorry. racket. So throughout the winter, we are not allowing ourselves to leave the property. Um, I grew up calling this place the land. So when I talk about the land, when we mention that we're gonna be up at the land, that's what it is, the property that we're staying. So once we are up there, settled in for good, we will not be leaving. Meaning we're not gonna go to, we're not gonna go out to eat, we're not gonna go resupply, we're not gonna jump in our car to head to public land. We rely on our feet or our snowshoes or our skis if that's something that we're gonna bring. Um, that includes holidays. The hope is to do maybe some sort of Thanksgiving thing you know, before we head out there, maybe with family, I don't know yet. Uh, Christmas, lucky for me, my family is kind of spread apart for this Christmas, which usually doesn't happen, which makes it a little bit easier to, you know, mentally know that I'm not going home for Christmas. So we are gonna stay up at the land, obviously, throughout the holidays. And 
we thought that it would be really cool if family would want to come and visit us up there and we could make them you know a Christmas meal out of everything that we have whether that's maybe some venison or some of our you know canned stuff we could make a you know dessert over the fire whatever so that's something that we've thought about for Christmas we don't know if that'll actually happen um anything else to that that I'm missing uh just that the only like well obviously I don't know if like the safety precautions are a separate part of it but no oh, let's go into them it's uh it's not like you know something happens and we're dead set on staying out there like we've said multiple times where we're trying to figure something out and something's not you know lining up whether it pushing the time back because we were planning on being there getting the bus there like basically right now and then getting it set up there and then going to the wedding and then starting when we got back but getting the bus retrofitted with new batteries new gear new solar um is taking longer than anticipated and i was just like well we make the rules like this is our own thing so we are taking a bit of a you know this is the thing that we're doing we're going to make the rules as we go right but safety precautions i will have my tow car out there and i do plan on keeping the driveway like parking the car next to the road and then keeping a lane open because there's a snow plow i think you said or your mom said it comes there once a week to clear the roads so we'll have something to have to keep that clear in case something happens if we have to get out of there like some sort of medical emergency or something happens with the dogs um, speaking of the dogs the only thing that i foresee being an issue is the river down below if it's thin ice like we're going to keep an eye on the dogs with that because both dogs love playing in the water but right now like just the way we both are with the dogs like we keep a very close eye on them especially if they're outside so and the dogs really don't run off out of eyesight of us that's just how both of them have always been so at least in that way like the river is out of sight it's down the hill it's through the woods so keeping them in sight up at camp where the rigs will be parked will you know that'll be good although when we're harvesting or gathering water that'll be the time where we worry about it you know well i mean it's simple as just like i doubt we'll be harvesting water at the same time like when it'll be somebody's chore to go get it yeah that's true so the other person will be with the dogs up at the rigs yeah and they have e-collars too so they not that we ever really have to use them that that often but if we do need to recall them if they're chasing something or whatever we can have them come back like it's I, yeah like I, I said early on that the one thing that i am nervous about is the the river and i think being that we are conscious of it and it's something that we're both mindful of i don't foresee it being an issue but that's the only thing and in terms of uh the pup staying warm you're gonna get aquila booties and a sweater right yeah aquila has booties already and then i'll get her probably a jacket aquila um doesn't really have a typical german shepherd coat she's more of a short-haired german shepherd and she has a very minimal undercoat whereas Kobuk is like the opposite he could probably lay in the snow for hours and be perfectly fine so Akila, you know has a tendency to be a little bit colder but we've also spent many nights in very very cold weather like where i've needed my negative 40 degree sleeping bag and we've shared that and she's been fine so we're practiced in the cold weather and i mean with that we're gonna have both of our rigs with heat and they'll have always have a warm place to be or to go but realistically like when you think about dogs especially these these breeds of dogs like we're more at risk of being cold than they are <laughs> so i'm not really too worried about them in in that way it's like staying warm yeah, and speaking of which, we need to track down some more firewood. Yeah, we do. The only thing I'm really nervous about, like more so than something happening or the dogs, is us getting out there and then we go to grab something and it's not there. Yeah. Like something that we really need or something we didn't even think about. 
but that's kind of the fun part, at least for me, is like trying to solve the issues that arise with what we have out there. Yeah. I think that'll be fun. I think so too. But we'll certainly have enough apple pie filling. I think so too. Yeah, I mean, is there anything else? I feel like that's pretty, I feel like we covered a lot in this. We covered a lot of things that you guys have been asking for months that I've mostly just avoided until this video. Why'd you avoid it? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's important for, you know, it's like when it's questions about us, I don't want to just go ahead and answer those without you here to have your side too or for you to add, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've talked about us a little bit on the podcast, but you know. No, it's just funny. I, I asked and you just said a <laughs> slow blink apple bite. Yeah. I just thought it was funny. Anything else you want to add about anything we talked about? Other than how much you love me. So, if you're watching this long, then I, I have a favor to ask. In the comments, when instead of saying Chris. Oh my gosh. If you could say Wolfman. <laughs> if anybody calls him Wolfman, I'm blocking you. <laughs> she Forever. loves it. Oh, I know. What? You should suggest, if you're into board games, what board Ooh. games we should get because we are going to probably be doing some live streaming of board games and we're going to keep track of the scores because we're both very competitive. And um, so far we have sequence, we have chess, and that's, that's all it. we have. <laughs> so any awesome board games that you all know about that would be fun that could be live streamed that, you know, don't really take that long or we could do long form too. I don't care. Long form what? Board games. Like we'll, we'll have competitions. No. You want short games? I hate long form games. All right. It's fine. I can, short it'll be good form for games. The, just kidding. Long form is fine. Go ahead and write those in the comments. That'll be much appreciated. And before we say goodbye, um, cool things to look forward to. I recently went to the reveal of the Ford Transit Trail, which is a badass, a badass van. And I'm really excited to share that video with all of you. That'll be coming out in just a few days. And then after that, we have the hunting video, which many of you have been asking about. It's just been pretty tough for me to put together in a way that I really love in a way that I think people can digest. Um, but that will be coming out soon. And then we will basically be up at the land and we will be starting our Northwoods stuff. I will be vlogging each week just as I always have. And Chris is also going to be vlogging, which he hasn't done in a decent amount of time. Years. Right? Years. Not consistently. Yeah. So, um, I don't think I have ever actually told them who you are on social media. So, you can find him at the Off Grid Schoolie. And YouTube, then. YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, YouTube, Instagram. I Facebook. Facebook. Chris all Travels of them. on Facebook. Chris Travels on Facebook, the Off Grid Schoolie, <laughs> on everything else. So, he will also be vlogging. And um, I think that's about it. That's it. Okay, thank you all for watching. This was a long one, but it was. How long do you think it'll much be? Much needed. Oh, probably an hour. That'll be a good little podcast. Yeah, do you want the audio for your podcast? Sure. There we'll see go. how it turned out. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun